Hello, today we are going to discuss the concepts used in constraint planning. It is divided into two parts. In this lesson, we will discuss first part. After completing this lesson, you should be able to explain the use of processing lead time in constraint plans. You should be able to calculate internal lead time for items with order modifiers. You would know how to calculate supply quantities based on capacity within lead time and explain the concept of capacity consumption. You can describe how you can prioritize demands in constraint supply planning. Constraint supply plan increases supply chain efficiency by using all possible alternate sources of supply to meet demands on time. The alternate sources of supply can include alternate resources, substitute components, alternate work definition, or alternate suppliers or source organizations. It respects material lead times as hard constraints. As you can see in the example, there are demands in an earlier bucket, but they are satisfied late due to material lead time constraints. Constraint planning also improves planner productivity by automating decision making. It can select among various alternates and optimizes the supply chain. Let's discuss about first topic of lead time calculations. Here, different order dates such as suggested star date and suggested ship date are shown with respect to lead times and different calendars used in calculating these dates for buy orders. For example, suggested due date is calculated using our manufacturing calendar and suggested dog date is calculated after subtracting post-processing lead time from suggested due date. Post-processing lead time days are calculated using org manufacturing calendar, while suggested dog date is calculated based on org receiving calendar. If org receiving calendar is not defined, plan will use organization manufacturing calendar. Here, the order dates and calendars used are shown for make orders. Here, Different order dates are shown with respect to lead times and different calendar used in calculating these dates for make orders. In case post-processing lead time is not defined, the suggested due date and dock dates will be same and calculated based on org manufacturing calendar. If post-processing lead time is defined, the suggested dock date is calculated after subtracting post-processing lead time from suggested due date. As we can see here, all dates are using our manufacturing calendar. In this slide, different order dates and calendars used are shown for transfer orders. For example, ship date is calculated by subtracting in transit lead time from suggested dock date. In transit lead time calculation is based on carrier transit calendar. If it is null, plan will use 24 cross 7 calendar. Here are some uh, very important points about constraint planning behavior. Constraint planning uses the processing lead time and not the fixed and variable lead time as used in un unconstrained planning. In unconstrained planning, the supply quantity is determined first and then the lead time of the supply is calculated using fixed and variable lead times using the formula fixed lead time plus variable lead time into uh, supply quantity but in constrained supply planning supply quantity is determined based on capacity within the processing lead time for example if the lead time for an item is three days and the available resource capacity is 16 hours per day the maximum supply quantity in this case would be 48 units. If the demand is more than 48 units, multiple supplies will be created. In constraint planning, internal lead time rollup is used to determine the processing lead time of items with order modifiers. 
if the user specified value is not feasible. For example, if an item has a fixed order quantity of 100 and based on the routing level processing time, the time required to make 100 unit is five days. If the user has a specified a processing lead time for the item as three days, the planning engine will use five days as the lead time since it is not feasible to make 100 units in a three day lead time. If the user has a specified a processing lead time for the item as seven days, the planning engine will use seven days as the lead time since the user specified value is more than the value calculated by the internal lead time rollup. In this topic, now we'll discuss how supply quantity is determined in a constraint plan. In constraint planning, the supply quantity is determined <clears throat> based on the capacity within the processing lead time. If an order modifier is present for an item, the processing lead time will be assumed to be maximum of the user specified processing lead time and the lead time required to make one order modifier worth of item. Resource capacity constraints will impact order sizing for items without order modifiers. In this example, the lead time for an item is three days. Most production rate is 10 units per hour and available resource capacity is eight hours per day. Since the processing lead time is three days, the maximum supply created in this case would be 240 units. If the demand quantity is more than 240 units, multiple supplies would be created Uh, this section discusses about capacity consumption. There are a few more points here. Supply orders can use resource capacity in any planning time bucket within their lead time. If the lead time is larger than the required resource usage, the capacity is used up in earlier time bucket first and then in later time buckets. In this example, the supply lead time is three days and resource requirement is 20 hours. Here, resource capacity is used up in earlier time bucket first. Please note that the supply due date will still be planned as late as possible to meet the demand on time. The resource utilization as shown in example pertains to how the consumption of capacity happens within the lead time of a specific supply order. Uh, this section will discuss about demand prioritization and constraint supply plan. Demands are prioritized in the following sequence in a constraint supply plan. First, plan will look into sales order by schedule date. If multiple sales order exist on same schedule date, then it prioritizes based on request date. If multiple sales orders with the same schedule date and the same request date, then plan prioritizes based on order value. The order value is calculated as order quantity into item price. So higher value should have higher priority. Then forecast by suggested due dates. And if multiple forecast on same suggested due date, then plan will prioritize by order value and the order value calculation will be same as uh, above as described based on order quantity into item price. This prioritization drives decision made in constraint planning and how existing supplies such as on hand are allocated to meet competing demands. Let's look into an example. Demand prioritization will largely influence demand satisfaction dates for orders within lead time meaning near term orders and not outside of lead time. Order outside of lead time will always be met on time regardless of demand priorities. In this example, the sales order will be prioritized higher than forecast as it is within the items total lead time. If the on hand is back to forecast on day five, then the sales order will be satisfied late. 
Therefore, the engine will decide to use the on hand for the sales orders and create a plan order to satisfy the focus late. In another example, all the demands are outside uh, lead time. The pegging will be purely FIFO in this case. Therefore, the on hand of quantity 50 will be allocated to the sales order on day six and to the forecast on day seven. A plan order will be created on day seven to meet the rest of the forecast and a plan order on day eight to meet other sales orders. Note that there is no preference given to sales order during pegging in this case as it is outside the items total lead time. So in this session, you would have learned how constraint supply planning uses processing lead time and how it calculate uh, lead times. You would have also learned how supply quantities are determined in a constraint supply planning along with concepts of capacity consumption. You should have, have also learned how planning engine prioritizes different demands. Thank you.